I have started the recording. I'm gonna we're we're gonna start in earnest when Antonio um, is able to pull up his slides. Um, if need be, uh, Antonio, I see that you are talking, but I cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. And now I can clearly hear you too. Fantastic. Can you um, pull up the slot your slides? And I will get everybody started. So um, first of all, thank you for coming. We are recording so that you'll be able to view this online. We don't appear to have everybody in just yet. Um, and I heard Antonio's cat in the, um, in the background. So I think we're all ready. Um, let's see, the, a few features that you may um, make sure that you, uh, I would recommend that you call in on a computer because you're going to, you may need some features that aren't as readily available on a mobile device. Um, and we're gonna be, we're gonna try to, every today the expectation is that everybody keeps up with everything um, but we'll have breakout rooms if you need some individual help. Um, and we have several, um, we have several instructors to help us with the breakout rooms if need be. Um, and without further ado, um, take it away, Antonio. Thank you, Christine. So, um, welcome to everybody. Uh, we will start uh, this Rivet workshop with some uh, instructions about what we're going to do uh, these five days. So the first day, um, we will just see some basic um, Rivet commands. And at the end, we will test if we can run Rivet with our analysis. Uh, in the second day, we will uh, see some components of the rivet analysis, uh, how you loop over events, how you loop over particles, uh, this kind of thing that is uh, important for all kinds of analysis. And the third day, we will play with the histograms, uh, make them uh, prettier, and also some troubleshooting. And the fourth day, uh, we will also uh, do some troubleshooting. Um, you, you can, all, of course, uh, bring uh, issues that you're having with your code, or if you have questions, uh, how, how to implement some uh, advanced features in, in Rivet. And also, it would be interesting if some of you start presenting some of your results. And in the last day, we will have um, the first results of your rivet analysis. Uh, presenting the results is very important, especially for me and Christine, uh, because uh, it will give us an idea of uh, how much did you learn and things that we uh, should improve for, uh, you know, for the future. So this is really important for us. So uh, don't be shy, um, even if you uh, don't have your uh, whole analysis implemented, and even if it's not doing a lot, it's uh, very important for us to, to see how far uh, you were able to, to go. Okay, uh, about this, um, this presentation, how to use it, uh, you have here on the top right this pause symbol. Uh, every time we have this in our slides, it's because we are going to pause and wait for everybody to um, do all the instructions that we um, uh, presented. And that, that's very important so that everybody, or at least most of us, are in, on the same page. Uh, so when you see something uh, like this yellow box, uh, with italics, it's because probably you have to um, replace something 
uh, according to your analysis. So in this case here, you have this command, rivet uh, make analysis, and you have this experiment underscore year underscore I code, and you have to change the experiment uh, by your experiment, star or phoenix, year is the year of the paper, uh, then you have this code, which is I, uh, capital I, and the inspire code of your, uh, of your analysis. Uh, we'll see this again in more details later, but just for you to know that uh, when you have this italics, it's because probably you have to uh, replace uh, something according to your analysis. And when you see this uh, blue box, it's because it's a homework, something that we expect you to uh, work uh, after the workshop. So there will be some uh, homework. Um, okay, uh, we will also um, ask you to uh, say if you're done with, with the, the instruction, and we are going to do this by clicking here in this uh, participants. And then uh, it will open this window with the participants and you have this option of clicking uh, yes or no. So if we um, told you, for example, to create your analysis and you're done with this, uh, you go here and click yes. If you're having problems or for some reason uh, you're not able to, to finish the task, you come here and click no. So this will give us an idea of um, if everybody is able to uh, follow and if nobody is having issues or if we have to uh, wait and do some troubleshooting, something like that. Uh, okay, so about uh, RCF, I think uh, most of you have access to RCF and here are some instructions of how to load rivet. Uh, you just uh, follow these lines and you'll be able to uh, load rivet on RCF. Uh, I think that... Antonio, could we do a quick test on the previous slide and make sure everybody knows how to do that and vote? You know, everybody say yes if you know how to do that. Yeah, okay. So please, everybody. Uh, go to the participants box and click yes if you can do this. Probably if you cannot, you, you're not going to click no. Okay, I see most of people already click it yes. I see a couple people, let's see, anyone? Okay, good, we're all set. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry if you can hear my cat. He demands a lot of attention during the morning, so, but he will sleep there, so. Um, okay, so uh, this is how to load rivet on RCF. I think uh, that maybe most of you already uh, try to do this. Uh, but uh, you just uh, follow these three lines and you'll be good. Okay, so first day, uh, getting uh, the analysis running. Uh, so as I said, um, we will follow some uh, standard, which is um, the name of your analysis. We will start with the experiment, so star or phoenix. And, in our case, and then underscore the year of the, the paper, not this year, I mean, the year of the, the paper was published, uh, underscore I and the inspire number. The inspire number, if you uh, access uh, your paper here on uh, archive, for example, you can click here on uh, inspire and we will open the inspire page and you'll have uh, the inspire number here. So this will be uh, the standard for your working directory and also for the name of your analysis. Okay, so um, here it's the, the first instruction that you 
should do in your uh, terminal. Uh, you go to RCF and you clone uh, this Git repository. Um, and then you can test if uh, the, this is working, if you load it correctly uh, with it. Um, by uh, entering this directory, uh, Revit analysis slash 0603010. Uh, this is one of the Revit analysis implemented uh, and it's here in this repository. And then you just uh, do this command uh, bash run analysis.sh. So uh, this will uh, run Revit and you have an output uh, like the one here in the, the terminal, uh, here in the figure. Uh, so I think we uh, can pause here and wait for everybody to uh, clone the Git repository and, and do this. Uh, and after that, we go to the next step, which is including your uh, working directory. But I, I think we should uh, stop here. Uh, you clone. You enter the direct directory and you uh, execute this run analysis.sh. And after that, as soon as you finish, you can go to participants and click yes if you finish the task. Antonio, when you have the participants up on your computer, it puts a black box. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. I always forget that. And if you guys are, so remember that on page five, we have the instructions for loading, um, loading rivet on RCF. Um, and of course, if you get stuck at some point, um, ask. So since we don't have a ton of participants for now, you can ask uh, by just unmuting and speaking up. If we get a lot of people asking at once, we'll move to using the chat. Ah, so uh, Ajiro asked if the um, if this is in RCF or Docker. So um, you can do this either way. Um, we, if you have Docker running already and using Rivet, it's probably a little easier to run it on Docker. You'll get faster turnaround, and it's easier to edit the code. Um, but it, if you haven't put the time into getting Docker running or you're not sure if you even can, um, since most participants should have access to RCF, then you can just log into RCF and follow the instructions on slide five. Either will work. The, the joy of using a Git repository for the analyses is that you can work on RCF today and on Docker tomorrow. Um, Git clone should not ask for a password. Um, it should be set to public. Yeah, I, I tested that. I mean, it didn't ask uh, unless you have a GitHub account. Yeah, and you do the HTTP one. Yes. That's right. So Tomas, I see you have your hand raised. Um, can you, you just go ahead and ask your question. Okay, hi. Uh, so uh, I have tried to run uh, run analysis, just uh, A, but I have an error that it doesn't know the uh, rivet command, but uh, when I type a rivet into my terminal, it works since I have this alias from the backup from this presentation. And now I'm not sure uh, what can be wrong. Are you using Docker or? Yeah, uh, I'm using uh, Docker. Okay, so Christine, maybe we put one room with Docker and one room for RCF and then we can, yeah. Uh, okay, so, um... Let, we've got, uh, we've actually got five breakout rooms um, and 
in principle, you guys, so uh, let's see. So I was also seeing a question from Will. Um, Will, I think yours might be related to our um, UT system because I know where you're running. Um, I actually just figured it out. I just needed okay. to change rivet build to rivet build plugin. Be oh, there's a, yeah, there's a couple, there's differences between minor rivet versions, which is why I recommended that you guys go with it. I think we, if you're using the version on RCF, the, the commands should work. Yeah. So let me okay. put. So I think it's because I haven't updated my local rivet installation in a little bit, but with that change, it just ran. So I'm good now. Okay. And then I am putting, um, I'm Raghav, I'm putting you in a room with Tomash. Uh, Wes Huang, I see your uh, hand up. Uh, yes, I'm running the source command, um, but it says bash source is not defined. Ah, um, if, if you're logging into RCF by default, it uses TCSH, so that's why I put both sets of instructions ah, okay. there. So yeah. you want to use the second set. Okay. Okay. All right, and I see that Locos has um, so Locos, are you sure that you did the directions on page five on slide five to set up RCF to set up rivet on RCF? Yes, I'm quite sure about that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm doing the four lines for bash. So my first command was bash, then the three line below. Something's right. happening, and after after that, then check out the Git repository. Okay, so now you're using um, RCF, and by default, RCF uses TCSH. Yes. So did you, you, but you use the bash lines? No, I just simply type a bash, enter. Ah, okay. And there's this entering bash, yeah. Okay, so if you enter bash and then you type the, um, the bash commands, it should work. Um, let me, so I need, I need to have you with someone who, um, has access to um, RCF, which is me and Raghav. So let me put you in the room with, um, with Raghav. And if he's a little bit too, if it's taking too long, then what, what we'll do is we may rearrange a little bit. Okay. And then um, I saw a raised hand from Wei Huang. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so in the TCSH, TCSH command, so there are actually two, two lines, right? Yes. On the second line, there's one more backslash, right? Uh, backslash? Yeah, on the on the first line, on the end of the first line, there's a backslash. On the beginning of the second line, there's also a backslash. Is this two? Uh, I don't see backslashes. So the first line um, wraps around. It's more than um, it's more than one line, um, it, it, but it's one command. Um, so let me. But yeah, between Linux and the CVMFS, there are two backslashes. There's no, I see no backslashes. I see forward slashes. Oh uh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe, yeah, for forward, two forward slashes. Um, I don't see any double forward slashes. Uh, no, I mean. But there's a space. Okay. So maybe, let me. Maybe my slash is wrong. I'm not sure. 
Um. Also, okay. when, when I try to clone the rivet analysis, it always says uh, I'm able to access field connection to connection timeout. Is my internet is too slow? Um, let me just real quickly. I'm logged into RCF. Um, Antonio, I'm going to steal the screen share for just a minute. OK. Um, when I can. OK. So here. Yeah, you see in on the on the beginning of the second line, there's a back. It's another forward slash, so it's two lines. So then it should look like this. So if you have a long um it should wrap around so it's one command and the first command so so the first, the first line, so you're uh -huh. setting your path to be whatever okay. your path is by default, plus you're adding this directory, which loads all of the, which is a path for all of the latex stuff so that you can do the plotting on RCF that we'll need to do later. And then this is, I, this is pulling a different version of Python, which is compatible with other stuff. Okay. Um, so then you should be able to do this. And then um, here, this. And then I am going to move to temp just to make sure, because I already have a copy of this. And then if you directly copy and paste that line. Yeah, it's, it's not working for me. Are you an, on RCF? Yes, I'm on RCF. Interesting. Because I am also doing this on RCF now. Maybe because... Uh... My internet is too slow. That should not, if you're logged into RCF, it's RCF's internet. Um, Once but, you're um, in. Can I share my screen? Uh, yes. Uh, Let yes. me ask if people can say in the chat, other participants using RCF, are you guys having the same issue? Oh, I can send my error to the chat. Um, this is my error. Okay, so I am at least, so David is getting it to work, and so is Krista. That's trying to access an internal BNL site, and I don't understand why that would do it. Um, maybe because I opened the, the internal BNR. Let me try. Are you on the login node in RCF, or did you jump through to, a, um, to one of the ter RCAS terminals? Sorry, what's the difference? So normally when you log into RCF, you get, a. so here you can, uh, actually, I'm not sharing my screen now. So I'm going to share my screen. When you log into RCF, um, yeah. then you get this terminal and then you have to do R term minus I, and that puts you on a, one of the working nodes. Because yeah. the, the login terminal, the, the gateway doesn't have full functionality. I'm using SSH. 
that yeah but then um you should uh, let me look at what my alias is so uh, when you log in via ssh you um you should be doing something like ssh username at ssh.sdcc.bnl.gov. Uh, let me check. And then when you do that, you first, that's the gateway. Yeah. But then you have to get onto one of the worker nodes. Yes, I'm on the worker node on 2069. Uh, so I'm using SSH RCAS 2069. What's the difference between our term and the SSH? Uh, SSH is a generic protocol that gets you, that helps you log into a terminal anywhere. Um, our term is, I believe, an alias specific to BNL. Um, that moves, so you first SSH into the gateway and then you SSH into um, into another machine from that gateway. Yeah. So um, the gateway, me. but if you're in 2069, so I have just logged into that exact machine. Um, so here, you should see something like username at yeah. RCAS 2069. I want you to try one thing, which is to log out and log back in. And then I'm going to, I think I may have to touch base with Raghav and see if he's overwhelmed or not. So here I am just going to do the exact same thing. Now, any issue with cloning the repository is unrelated to setting up the rivet environment. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Okay, so this just worked on me, just worked for me just fine on this exact same node. So that means that it is, it could be either, you, you didn't do exactly what you thought you did when you logged in, or you have something in your dot, um, dot bash RC or dot CSH RC, which is setting up some other environmental variables. So it's not loading everything correctly. Um, let me see how over whether, because uh, Raghav has two at a time. Um, I can try to work out later, maybe. I it, it's going to be a tough day to catch up from. Um, I'm gonna put you in the room with Raghav um, because he is the other person who has access to RCF. Um, and I'm gonna, I may see if he needs, cause I think um, Tomash did not have an RCF specific problem. I think his was a little different. Actually you should be, yeah. You guys should be able to join rooms on your own, but you get an invitation if I um, put you in the room.
And it sounds like other people had RCF working and we have, um, so I see one no, and that is Ajita. And Ajita, I think you, you just connected a little bit late. Is that right? I, yeah, um, the no was for, I don't have any problems. Oh, okay. Yes. Then you want, did, yeah, so you what said, we're, okay. Yeah, you what said we're, um, to say yes, if you have problems, so I just said uh, no. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's the, sorry, it's the opposite. Say yes, if you are at the point that we're, where we are on slide um, eight, and trying to make sure that everybody is able to check out the repository and just blindly run a code that runs an existing analysis. Uh, yeah, it seems to work in the RCF. Okay, so I see no response is by far the highest um, answer. Um, which I am interpreting as people need more time. And I will start calling on people otherwise. So I will pick on my own students first. So Will and Austin, are you guys able to blindly run the existing? Yep. Um, like I said, I just had that one error where I needed to replace rivet build with rivet build plugin. So maybe if anybody else is like me using it on a local system and you have a slightly older version, just do that same thing. But other than that, yeah, I'm caught up. Okay. Can you click yes? Oh, I thought I did click yes. Okay, it doesn't show up. And then Austin, um, I think. Weird. Let me exit the participants then and see if it will show up. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, I, yeah. No, I, I am not able to run it yet. Okay, I am going to deflect you to working with Will. Right, okay. Cool. Um, do you want it, why don't you guys, if you need it, go ahead and use breakout room two. You should be able to join or I can add you. Okay. Um, can you add me? I can add you as soon as I get to the right window. Okay. Thanks. I'm not sure how to join a breakout room. On the bottom panel, um, and I think it moved my, all right. I see mute, start video, participants, chat, share screen, and record. Yeah, that's that's all I see too. Let's see. All right, then you guys got uh, assigned to room two. Yes, I, right, see, it. Cool. I see it. Okay, and. And Krista, I think you said something on the chat that you were able to run at least something. Yes, the test rivet installation step. Yes, I think that ran. Okay. And did were you able to check out the Git repository? Yes. Okay. Can you click yes on the participant list? Okay, sorry. I wasn't sure if we were on make your working directory step. Okay. Uh, let's see. Because I'm not sure what that last line does. Ah, okay. Ah, that's a good question. Okay. So, yes, I would like you to do this. So that does involve the step where you have to figure out the, so you have to find what you would call your analysis based on slide seven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and which will take a minute. Um, and then that last line said is a terrible awful command that dates back from the way early um, era of unix machines and the lovely thing is that uh it it is uh it allows you to edit files on the command line so what this command does is the minus i means edit the file in place so that you don't have to open it the 
S, so the single quotes around the first chunk um, say this is the command to follow. The S does a search through the file and then the backslash set, the, the first thing between the backslash is what it searches for. So it's searching for the, um, the string phoenix underscore 2006 underscore i 711951 and that is the name of the analysis that you copied this from and it is going and your the the next set that is experiment underscore year underscore i code um that is your the name of your analysis and mm -hmm. the the G says do a global search and replace. So what this does is it runs through the, it searches through the script run analysis dot sh and it replaces the old name of the name of the old analysis by the name of your analysis. So that then you have by default a working script which just in this in this folder we have in this repository we have a small set of 10 gold gold events so this this run analysis.sh will just run over those 10 gold events which is not a lot but it's enough to find most stupid bugs and get I started see. okay so then there's a space here between the dash i and the beginning yes. of the single quote okay yes you should be able to go into the slides and just copy and paste stuff. Okay. And um, like, you'll obviously have to change the the string experiment underscore year underscore I code to whatever your name is. Yes. We, we okay. were sort of taking bets on how many things would not be changed, but. Okay, thank you. Sure, that's a great question. Okay, so then I think you're not 100% through everything and I think it, the odds are reasonable that not everybody else is either. Um, let's see, going down the line. Stacy Ann, where are you? Okay, so you got the Git clone, but then um, I'm guessing that you are also where Krista is, where you have not yet made your working directory. Okay, so let me check in. Zhang Dong, how are you proceeding? Um, I'm, I apologize because I'm late. I just joined a couple of minutes ago. I'm catching up on the slides now. Okay. What we're trying to do is make sure everybody has a working version of um, Rivet and can run a sample script. And it sounds like we have um, a point problem. So this one, so this first thing is making sure that people actually can get started. So it is probably worth hanging up just a little bit. Um, why don't we give it 
let's give it five minutes and maybe we can move ahead for the at least half of the participants who are this far. Does that sound reasonable, Antonio? Yes, I think so. Okay, so I think at this point for anyone who's not caught up, the problem is that it's possibly system specific and related to RCF. But I think that we, I think it, most people are getting it to work fine. Antonio, I'm going to step out of the main room for a bit and check in on um, room one. Okay. Hi, Jiro. Yes, uh, after you're done uh, with at least uh, testing uh, the run analysis.sh, you click yes in the participants list. So it's done with what? At uh, when step? you finished. Um, testing um, run analysis.sh, you go to participants and you have this yes and you click yes. Okay. So they're actually almost caught up in the breakout room. Okay. So then I think, Stacy Ann, I think as you were able to do the git pull, you actually should be able to do the next step as well, which is the um, making the name, making a working directory in there. Yes. Have you, have you done it yet? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, go ahead and start working on it. Um, 
Okay, I think everybody maybe if it's finished with the testing, you can let me just share the screen. Yeah, yeah. So I think we can resume because I think everybody is at least at a point where it doesn't prohibit them moving on. No. Yes, after uh, testing your renels.sh, you have to follow uh, these five lines, uh, which basically you uh, go back to the rivet analysis folder. And then you create uh, your working directory, which will be uh, everything in, in capitals, uh, your experiment, star of Phoenix, the year of your paper, uh, capital I and code, which is the inspire number. And then you enter your directory, you copy the run analysis.sh, we will add it to this later. And, and you use this command. Uh, every time I see uh, something a bit sad, uh, I think well, probably Christine wrote this. And so it will replace uh, this uh, analysis name in run analysis with your uh, analysis name. So here you have to put your experiment, star or phoenix, uh, the year of the paper, capital I and spire number. That's the, the only part you have to edit in this line. Yeah, I think the said command is probably older than almost everyone on this uh, call. But it's really useful <laughs> in the right circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it completely blindly does whatever you tell it to do. Um, so you have to use it very carefully. But fortunately, these strings are unique enough that it, it's it's not gonna so like if you if you search through um for a string it's going to replace absolutely everything um whether it makes sense or not are we waiting until everybody i i think i didn't clear the last poll oh well, okay so maybe we should but i see poll. one i i think there's already one no. So Ajira, what's up? Um, yeah. Was I supposed to do something with Rivet? Because it, it says um, it's uh, it doesn't recognize the command Rivet build. Uh, After are, you you, do uh, are you on are you on RCF? Huh? Can you hear me? RCF, yes. Okay. And did yes. you, and so you did, did the load environment commands on slide five work? Let me go back to slide five and make sure that's. So by default, RCF uses um, TCSH and not bash. And so if, you, unless you have purposefully used bash, you should probably use the TCSH commands. Um, and then, okay, we're back, Christine. Sorry. Okay. I actually may, well, yeah. So if you, if it worked, if you didn't get errors when you tried to set up the, um, when you tried to set up rivet, then it should run the test analysis. Why don't we, because everyone, let, let's pers proceed, and I may put you in the breakout room with, let's proceed and move to the next pause step, and I may pr put you in the breakout room with Ragov if uh, you're still stuck. Okay. Uh, we have someone else in the waiting room, actually. Ah, I got him. It's Gabor. Um, he's not going to be keeping up with us. He's curious, but okay. not working along. All right. So, all right, proceed, Antonio, thanks. So I, uh, should I assume that everybody was um, able to create their working directory? Except for 
a Jiro who may have issues with running Rivet on RCF, so we may have to catch her up later. Yeah. Okay. We can do that now, actually. If you, I mean, we just got uh, Wei Zhuang I, set up, but it's... yeah, I want to. I want to. I want Jiro to be able to see the next couple steps. Okay. Okay. So the next step after creating your working directory is to create a generic uh, rivet analysis. So you enter your uh, working directory, and you do uh, you, you you use rivet. Uh, MK analysis. So uh, how how you're going to do this? It's rivet MK analysis, and then the name of your analysis: experiment underscore year underscore i code, and this code again. It's the expire number. So it will create um, a generic analysis, a generic rivet analysis. Uh, here, as uh, below, as an example, I used rivet make analysis phoenix 2013 and the spire number and then uh, it will create um, depending on your analysis it will create four or three uh, files it will create four if your analysis uh, if the data is already on hep data but i think that for most analysis that's not the case so it will create uh, three files Uh, if your analysis it's not yet on uh, HEP data, you have uh, one thing to do before moving on, which is uh, getting your data from uh, the sandbox. Uh, you or uh, if it's on HEP data, but for for some reason it didn't automatically uh, download it from there, you have to go to HEP data. And as showed here, you uh, download the data uh, selecting Yoda. So probably it will uh, download uh, a tarball and you have to um, decompress it. And then after that, you use this set command to change uh, this uh, rivet underscore analysis underscore name that there's inside your file. Uh, with experiment year code, uh, this is the name of your analysis. So here in this line, you have to change uh, experiment year and I code uh, by your uh, experiment year of the paper, I and spire number. And oops, sorry. And then you change also uh, the name of the the Yoda file that uh, you extract from the, the tar. Um, and also uh, rename it um, by the name of your analysis, experiment year I code dot Yoda. And of course you have to um, put this file inside your working directory uh, on RCF if you're working on uh, RCF. Hey, Christine. Yeah. Um, I'm still having some issues. Do you mind if I steal Antonio? Uh, Antonio is giving the presentation. So I think briefly explain the issue and we'll try to find someone who can help. Ah, OK. So let me get this out of the way. OK. And let me, let me say. Otherwise, so I think the previous slide we had a pause. So everybody try to run rivet make analysis. And if you're not quite, and I sh I'm going to go ahead and clear the um, the survey responses. In just a second. All right. So now you'll have to respond again and let us know when you're caught up. And Austin, maybe you can try running the rivet make analysis thing since at least your rivet version command was working. Maybe that would work, but yeah. you'll plug it in. I can. And I think I'm going to go ahead, Ajiro, and put you in um, the breakout room with, uh, with Raghav. OK. And 
Raghav, because you're assigned there, you should be able to rejoin the breakout room without me doing anything. Uh, uh, yeah. So Austin, can you say what the error you were having was? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I'm just having problems running Rivet. Actually, um, actually, give give me one second. You can you can keep going if you would like to. I may have found the issue. Okay. If you can, if you found the issue, let us know when you're caught up. Okay. And David, Christian um, replied to your comment that it should, well, asking if your files came out okay. Uh, so it generated files. I don't know what okay means. Is there a way that I can check and say good file, not good file? Um, yes. Uh, so they, oh, go ahead. They, they should have content. First of all. Okay, based on that, yes, I have files. Was it supposed to download a Yoda file as well with the reference data? Um, I do not have a Yoda file. I have the .cc.info and .plot files, which I think is what I, the instruction said it would make. Okay, then, then it's probably fine. Um, but I don't have the other file, but my, my data wasn't up in HEP data either. So um, okay. Okay. Then, then that's where I should be at. The other file. Yeah. So that's probably so, why you got that error. Okay. The error is a Python 2, Python 3 compatibility issue. Uh, but uh, it should be all right anyway. If the okay. Are there. Thanks. So if your data are not in HEP data, you're going to have to do the instructions on slide 10 anyways to get it um, to get the um, to get the data in a rivet compatible format um, but the analysis will run you won't actually um, what we'll do today you're not going to notice you, you might not notice the missing data um, because we're not actually uh, in the at the very end you'll miss it you'll miss the data um, but you're not going to notice the missing Yoda file for a little bit. Um, and then Stacy Ann asks for the inspire number, should the dot be placed in the make dir? Um, I am not, uh, I'm not entirely sh There should not be a dot in in a line with Mictor. Sorry, go ahead. Some, sometimes based on how you search in the Inspire, it only uh, shows the preprint print number. Like the way you asked us to uh, find the Inspire number, it only shows the preprint print number. But if you search it by title, then it should um, show the actual Inspire number and that shouldn't have any dot. Yeah, thank you. I think that was Ajita. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so the the easy, what I like to do to get the Inspire number is to go to the Inspire entry, and then it's actually in the URL. So if you look at slide seven, um, you can see I took screenshots and circled what the what the numbers should be. Sorry, can I interject again? Sure. So when I when I did the same thing, but if I uh, went straight from my archive link, then it kept on showing the archive number instead of the actual Inspire ID, and that's probably what she is having hmm. problem with. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So, so what okay. I did instead, what I did instead is like went to the Inspire and then searched by the name of the paper and then found the right uh, paper and then it uh, like following what christine suggested i could find the actual inspired okay. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, what I see by the responses is that we have five yeses, um, but it looks like people are mostly still working. All right, Krista, go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Um, so the files I have are not in HEP data already, so I downloaded them from the sandbox. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, then I um, unpacked it. Mm -hmm. And so what's the second, the second um, command on slide 10? The second okay. command, as Antonio said, is one of these lovely said commands that I made. So when, um, so you should be able to copy and paste it out of the slides. Um, the, this is said, the minus I does a search through the file and edits it in place as opposed to spitting it out to the screen. Um, single quotes around it give the command and it's a string search so it's searching through for the string rivet underscore analysis underscore name which it is if you look in the yoda file that you downloaded from the sandbox it it has that string in there oh, okay um, and if if you have an analysis which is actually in hep data then it puts the correct name in there. Um, so you need to replace rivet underscore analysis underscore name by the name of your analysis. And so this command searches through the, the Yoda file and makes that string replacement everywhere. Um, and what this is going to do is that if, if you don't do this, then Rivet doesn't know that those data belong to your analysis. So, okay, so I guess there's a difference between the name Rivet analysis name and experiment year I code. Yes. And actually, I realize in our nomenclature, name should be italicized as well. So you're going to have to replace experiment underscore year underscore I code um, by the name of your analysis. Yes. And you're and you're going to have to replace name dot Yoda by whatever it called that thing, which is dependent on the um, exact sandbox version that, you know, it because it, yeah. Because HEP data has some sandbox identifiers. And so it yes, will have named okay. the file something totally bizarre. OK. I'm sorry. I just have one more question about this rivet analysis name. So I need to replace yeah. that. No, that one you leave because oh, okay. that is okay. actually the string. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and draw on Antonio's slides. So this you have to replace by whatever garbled awful name hep data called it and that's going to be the same here you're gonna it's whatever that it called it and then you have I to see. replace this string and this string and this string uh-huh i see okay so so there's a lot of them in there where you you just have to you have to replace strings. I see. And so the ones that we replace are in italics. I think I remember. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm saying that. OK, thank you. OK, Christy, may I have a question? Yes. Um, uh, maybe I'm a bit confused because I missed the head data workshop in the end of November. So I have an analysis which don't which is not in HEP data. So what should I do? Okay, so I believe oh yours we were going to have someone format and it never got formatted, but I think it was a simple one. Yeah, it was copper gold phoenix yeah. data. Yeah. So for today, you're not gonna worry about it. Okay. Because um because it can't be you can't you don't have the the data um i i think it only had a couple plots send me an email please okay 
Okay, I will do it now. Thank you. I, I will try to get some, because you, yeah, you will reach a um, point when you can't do anything until you have the data. Okay, thanks. That point will come tomorrow. <laughs> Um, and I didn't see who raised their hand first, but let me go with Tomash. Okay, uh, I have a question when I uh, I'm trying to run the common rivet uh, MK analysis. It says that it cannot uh, found that data on a HEP or data set, and I'm not sure how I should direct it, it, it to look into my folder to my Yoda file. Okay, so this is where you, you, so you ignore the error on slide 10 because you, or sorry, on slide nine, because you know already that your analysis is not in HEP data. Oh, okay. And then um, on slide, um, on slide 10, this is where you deal with that. So I believe your data well, I think you checked them in to be submitted to HEP data, but didn't get it. They, they must not be on HEP data quite yet. But you have you have the files, the YAML files, to upload them to HEP data. So what you can do is upload them to HEP data and then download it from the sandbox. Yes. So That's if you idea. okay, so then. You just have to follow the instructions on slide 10. So where you're going to do the same thing Krista was doing, where you, uh, when you downloaded it to the sandbox, it gave you this awful garbled name. Yeah. And you're going to um, replace that. You're going to replace name in the commands on slide 10 by that garbled name that the sandbox gave you. And you're going to replace a Antonio. Can you go to the next slide? So here in these commands, you're going to replace this by the name from HEP data, and you're going to replace this by the name of your analysis. Yeah, uh, that uh, I have all, all, already done. Okay, so then you're set. So. Um, Okay. So you you won't be able to see that it worked until a couple slides from now. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm still a little confused with the where the rebate analysis name is. What should I put there? Um not, you leave it as rivet analysis name. Oh, okay. Be because if you look inside of that um Yoda file you're going to see that the um, the Yoda file has a default rivet analysis name, which is rivet analysis name. Oh, OK. <laughs> and that's what you're replacing. OK. Austin, since I think that you have a, an issue related to our UT cluster, I put you in breakout room two and I asked Charles to join you because I think it's probably a UT issue. I'm so actually get... not using ACF. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't, yeah, it's all right. I can, I can, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. You can okay. move on. Let me ask you to use ACF then. Okay. Because it works. All right. I will. I will uh, refer to Charles then. Okay. And then Krista, I think, did you, oh, actually I've, I've left, uh, we had, uh, Wei Zhuang had a question, go ahead. Uh, yes, so uh, when I ran the, 
the uh, rivet make uh, analysis, how do I know if I succeed or not? It will make uh, three or four files, depending on whether or not you are, um, whether or not you uh, have your analysis in um, in HEP data. I got a CC file, a info file, a plot, and a UDA file. Yes, it worked. Okay, but it says uh, inspire spare oops cannot use a string pattern on a bad bad stack object. What this error means? I think Christian said that that was a Python version version issue. Python but if version. if it worked, if it made files, you're probably okay. Okay, thanks. And then Zhang Dong. Zengdong, you have your hand raised as well. Okay, I just lowered a couple people's hands just to make sure, because it sounded like we had answered their questions. Raise it again if we did not answer your question. Um, what I see is more people, I think we have a couple people who've gotten a touch behind. Um, and then about half of all people caught up. Um, we do have a break point for a coffee break in a little bit, and that might be a good time as well um, to get caught up. So maybe let me say, Antonio, um, why don't you proceed and instead of um, stopping at slide 14, you go through 15. And then what we can do is a mix of breakout rooms to catch people up and then the people who are ready can start checking their stuff in. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so I will move on. So uh, the next part is about centrality. Uh, this is especially important for us because uh, there are a lot of papers that are not just uh, PP collisions. So uh, the files that you generated using uh, Rivet Make Analysis uh, generated uh, three or four files. And one of them is the .cc file, which is the uh, main file of your analysis, where you're going to with most of your code. And if you open this file, you'll see uh, one method there that's, uh, that's init. And there will be a lot of things there. So what I recommend you to do is you remove all the content in the init part and you put only this line. Uh, this will declare uh, the centrality in, in uh, projection in your analysis. And uh, you only have to replace uh, here and here uh, if your paper is a star paper. If it's Phoenix, uh, okay, uh, that's what you have to, to write. Uh, Phoenix in, in both uh, parts here. Uh, another thing that you have to do is uh, in the, uh, the first part of your .cc file, you have uh, a lot of headers. So you also include uh, this line. Uh, this is not an official um, Rivet uh, header. So that, that's why we have to uh, include by hand. And it's, this header, it's located here. Um, in the Rivet repository, uh, sorry, in, in your repository, uh, centralits slash rig centralit.hh. Um, 
Okay, so for the init part, you add this line and you're going to have uh, other parts in your .cc file, the analyze and the finalize. Uh, I also recommend that you um, for now remove uh, everything that you have in the analyze and the finalize. You just keep uh, the method, but um, nothing between the, the curly brackets. Uh, so the only thing that you're going to have there is in init and it will be this line. Uh, there will be other things, some global variables after the finalize, but uh, keep it there. Okay, so uh, now we have to edit your um, ran and, uh, ran alice.sh. So if you open, you're going to see um, something like this. Maybe uh, it will be another analysis name uh, because uh, it's your analysis name that will be there. And one thing that you have to uh, be sure is that you have this uh, minus P and this path to your centrality calibration. Uh, if it's a Phoenix analysis, that's the, the name. But if it's a star analysis, you just change the name of this uh, .yoda file to this one here in blue. Um, and then uh, the rest will be very similar, but instead of Phoenix 2013 and spare number, it will, it will be uh, the analysis name, uh, your analysis name. Um, so in the terminal, you can use uh, ch mode to um, make it uh, executable. And then you just uh, run it using uh, dot slash run analysis dot sh. Uh, let me just, yeah, here at the end, um, you have uh, minus O rivet.yoda. It will be the name of the output when you run your analysis. And this happmc underline file dot happmc is the, uh, the file containing the, the simulation that you're going to use. Um, the, the runanalysis.sh that you have, I think uh, it will already have uh, a path to a file. Uh, it contains just a few events and it, it will be enough for, for testing. So you, you don't use this name. Uh, just use the, the one that you have in your .sh. Okay, some explanation of the command. Uh, you have this, uh, this the last line, a, a long command. So you have rivet minus minus pwd. Uh, this is the main rivet command to run your analysis and the minus minus pwd. Uh, we'll make rivet and knows that uh, your directory uh, is included in the list of the uh, of the directors where Rivet will check analysis. Uh, this minus p uh, it's a, a calibration file for uh, the centrality. Um, so if your analysis PP collisions, this will be not very important, but for heavy ion analysis, we uh, will need this file. Uh, maybe your analysis is not uh, gold go 200 GeV, but uh, today, just for testing, uh, it's enough to uh, use uh, this one for Phoenix and, and this one if your analysis is star analysis. Uh, then it comes uh, the name of your analysis. And here there is an additional uh, flag that you're passing uh, together with your analysis. Uh, you have this column uh, sent equals gem. This flag will tell Rivet to uh, generate the centrality that, uh, based on the simulation itself. I mean, using this calibration file. There are other methods like using the impact parameter, but for now, uh, we just used uh, this method, which will uh, calculate the centrality 
uh, the same way that the, the experiment does. So that, that's important for us. Uh, minus O rivet.yoda, it's the name of your output. Uh, I believe that if you don't uh, use this, it will automatically create a rivet.yoda. But if you want to your output with another name, you just change rivet.yoda to your preference uh, name of output file. For now, you can just uh, keep the, the standard name. And, and the last part is the simulation file, uh, which in your uh, runanalysis.sh probably you already have a path and the name of a test file. That would be enough for, for us to, to use. Uh, another important thing that you have to set for your centrality is in the .info file. Uh, if you open your .info file, you're going to see a lot of information uh, about the, the paper. Um, and you have to include uh, these two lines here in, in blue. Um, I think you could, in principle, include it in any place, but I recommend uh, including these options and the flags uh, right after uh, luminosity. You're going to find uh, this line in your .info file, and then you just include uh, these two lines in blue. Um, yeah, as I said, there are other uh, ways to uh, determine centrality, uh, not only using uh, the same method that experiments use, but for now, that's the only one that we are going to, to focus now. Um, and yeah, as I said, you, you have to include this uh, saint equals gen in your run analysis, like showed here, uh, so that Rivet knows what type of uh, central det determination you want to use. Okay, so this would be the cough break. We the idea here is that you uh, go through these instructions. And, and then you try to, uh, you, you save your .cc and your .info file, and you commit your code on Git using git pull. Uh, you enter, uh, you go to the, to the uh, rivet analysis folder, and you use git add, and you add your folder, and then git add, and you add all the files that you have in your, in your folder. Um, you add some comment, uh, something meaningful for, for you and maybe for people that will read your code in the future. And then use git push, uh, probably it will uh, request your username and password, and then it will uh, commit to our git repository. So I think yeah. you have a lot of steps. Yeah, so this is where the reason we're doing this at a coffee break is because if we have 10 people trying to push to the same repository all at once, um, you're going to get errors because it will warn you that you are not using the latest up the most up to date analysis if someone beats you by a fraction of a second at committing so um, what we're going to do is um, first of all let's we will have a scheduled resumption of going through slides at i think 11 o'clock because there's a lot of stuff to get through um, and in the interim, when someone has reached this point and they're ready to commit, please raise your hand so that, and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna clear the, um, the responses. So um, raise your hand when you have, when you are ready to commit and um, click yes when you are, um, when you are done with all of the steps except committing. Um, so then with that, since we left a fair number of people behind, um, 
actually i'm going to say for now also raise your hand if you are if you need to be put into a breakout room for assistance Charles, I saw you briefly raise your hand. Does that mean that you are ready to do the committing? Yeah, um, I actually got confused because you were like, oh, raise your hand. Yeah, and I said raise your hand both. Yes. Uh, so if I'm you're re ready, and I, I actually did already commit, um, but I don't know if I need to do it again. Um, you did commit it already? Yes, it's in the okay, yeah, Charles already committed it. Um, okay. I would say hold off on committing anything else yet, Charles, because I'm changing right. stuff and I'm going to recommit it. Great. Um, all right, just to, so everybody feels better, Charles is my own student and was chomping at the bit, so I directed him to the slides over the weekend. So um, that's the reason yes. he's ahead of everybody I, I else. I pretty much had done that part yesterday, so I didn't just, you know, do that now. I, yeah. I it took me a while to figure it out. Um, and let me, Stacy Ann, I see your comment, but David raised his hand first. David, are you ready to commit, or did you have a a question and need a breakout room? Uh, I've got a question. If I can get a breakout okay. room, yes. that'd be great. Okay, what is your question on, so I can know who to direct you to? Um, so my code is using copper copper and it doesn't have this calibration centrality file already existing. Um, so you're, you're gonna, you're gonna work with gold gold today. Okay. And for the next couple days, because I have to simulate some copper copper and then we have to do a run to get a calibration file. Okay. So for the sake of the files, pretend like it's gold gold for now. For now, yes. Um, and with the outage on um, RCF tomorrow, which is a terribly, terribly timed outage, um, it's probably going to be until Wednesday at the earliest until I have a calibration file for you. But you can proceed treating it like gold gold. Sounds great. Thanks. Does, uh, do you still need a breakout room? Uh, not that I know of. May happen. Okay. Okay, great. Takahito. Yep, I'm ready to commit. Ah, okay, go ahead and commit. Hi, I have a question that probably can be answered quickly. So in slide 11, um, we were told to like delete everything inside in it. And what were the other methods? Like I, I think like we had to delete more stuff. Yeah, so um, everything in, um, Everything that the code makes by default is a bunch of stuff like if you wanted to have a jet analysis or um, I think there's something about electrons or W's yeah. and we're working on the assumption that people here are not doing that kind of analysis. Mm -hmm. um, although it's there if you wanted to use it as a template. Um, so mostly it's stuff irrelevant to uh yeah i think you can remove but you don't need i mean oh, you I can for now just do this this in the init and the analyze and finalize we're going to to go through in the, maybe not today but soon okay but you had originally said to remove everything and analyze and finalize also right you can remove the content, you okay. just keep um, just the, the methods, methods, but without uh, anything in between the, the curly brackets. Okay, yeah, thank you. Zendong, um, Zendong um, are, you raised your hand. Do you have, are you ready to commit or do you have a question? Uh, I have a question. I'm sorry, I, I lost uh, my Zoom window just now, so. No worries. Uh, do, do, do I ask no or do I ask him? Yeah, the... just ask okay. and I'm going to decide if it's quick, we'll answer it here. If it takes one on one help, then we're going to put you in a breakout room with, with someone. Okay. So uh, I think I'm at the point to, I have my directory. And I've, when I try to revive make analysis, and I cannot get the data from half data. So I think um, you remember like we had some email changes 
you said you uh, like the hub data, the compressed file, I send there are some things to be corrected. And do I use my version or use your correction? I think it doesn't matter because I think that the only thing I changed were things like keywords, which won't show up in the Yoda file. So it doesn't actually matter. So, so now the situation is that it's not on have data yet. And I have right. to do it from the sandbox. And yeah. Okay, okay, awesome. I know. Then I will go ahead. Thank you. All right, so then I see, um, Locos, I think that you are, um, you may also have the same, okay. You have warnings that are related to centrality and I'm gonna tell you this same thing that I told David, which is for the time being, you're going to treat your data like gold gold because we have that calibration file. Okay, so I don't have to do anything with this warning. Right, and, and this is a warning and we may be able, if I get some jobs in by noon, I may be able to, uh, we may be able to get a calibration file earlier. Okay, thanks. Um, also, send so, me an so email. I can... Both David and Loco, send me an email about the calibration files so it doesn't get lost in the noise. Okay. Okay, so I can proceed with this. And... Yes, it's a warning because you don't... Um, let, let me actually defer to Antonio, if Antonio can look at that one. I think you don't have to yeah, worry right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm reading the, the, the output. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think it's a warning because of this flag bin that it's not implemented in your analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want, you can remove this uh, column bin equals D gold 200. Uh, and at least this warning will not appear anymore. But uh, it says, um, as far as I can see, it's fine. It's not, uh, it, okay. it's working the way it should. Okay, so I can commit like this. Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. No problem. Um, and then Stacy N, is your error that you're getting on when you follow the instructions on slide nine? Uh, can, can you just tell us real quickly what that error is? So the arrow says, um, first it starts writing templates, blah, 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 getting inspire Biblo data from Phoenix from the file. Then it says, inspire cannot use a string pattern on a bytes like object. And then at the end, it says no reference data file written. Okay, so did it make the files for you? Uh, yes, it did. Okay, then I think you're fine. I think you had the confluence of two errors. One was this um, issue related to Python versions and is not a showstopper. Um, and the other is a warning because your data are not yet in HEP data. But I think you know your data are not yet in HEP data. Yes. So in which case, you already knew you had to follow the steps in slide nine, slide 10. I do have error with the submission. That's the problem. With error the with this. Uh, did you have issues related to the to negative numbers in the bins? In yes, yeah, so I, yes. Okay, you can probably solve this by doing git pull on YAML maker and running it again because uh, someone using it gave me a fix the other day. So that's one solution, but we're probably not gonna fix it today. Try later on. Yeah, okay. this may be one of those offline things. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
I think Antonio, the one from Tomash. Tomash, do you want to go ahead and say your problem? I'm going to step out real quick. Um, but Antonio, I think the question Tomash just put in the um, question in the chat is probably is for you. Okay, I, I have a problem. When I follow the instruction, there is a problem to in include uh, the header. Mm -hmm. I have tried uh, absolute path, but it doesn't work for me. There is uh, uh, error that uh, the file, uh, no such file or directory can be found. Uh, yeah, uh, you're I using uh, Rivet with Docker, right? Yes. Yeah, and I think Docker will, um, um, let's say, will see only your working directory when you run. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, uh, yeah, you mean that I should follow the uh, slide 27 or? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, there was uh, some note in, in your presentation on slide 27. So I think that I should follow. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, uh, okay. you have to copy this rig centrality.hh to your working directory. And when you declare the, the header in your .cc, you, you just remove this dot dot slash centrality slash okay thank you i will follow the slide so locals you have also um, maybe if you want you, you can uh, speak and try to say what you're doing yeah okay so i think Confused. this this uh, error because my data is not in have data right uh, no, I think, uh, did you remove everything uh, from the init and just left? Uh, no, actually, line? I just, I just paste this line. Yeah, this one. And I didn't remove anything. Should I? Okay, so probably uh, because you have some histograms there. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's trying to uh, book the histogram and you don't have your... Uh, your data yet. Okay. Okay, then I will remove them. Yes. Okay, thanks. No problem. I see a hand up from Wei Huang Peng. Yeah, uh, I have a problem. Um, well, when I'm trying to run the, the run analysis .h, um, it says there's some errors. The first error is that no matching function call for rivet, rig analysis, centrality. Uh, did you include the, the header in, in the top of your dot? Yeah. yeah. Uh, on top? No, yeah. I mean. Yeah, where all uh, the other headers are. I included the file, but not in the first line. Um, mm. Yeah, in your dot .cc, uh, in the top part, you're going to have a lot of uh, includes. You can just uh, put this line there. Yes, I have that line. So you have that? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, could you maybe... Um, did you see... Uh, okay, this error you, you get during the, the compilation. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you're using um, Rivet on RCS. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and your analysis yeah, star or Phoenix? Uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. Do I need to share my screen so that you can see better? Sorry? Do I need to share my screen? 
You want to share your screen? No, me, me, me. That that might work because I think that otherwise we. My other suggestion would be to commit it so that someone can look at it, but sharing your screens a little faster and we appear to have no backlog of questions. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. So this is the error. Okay. Uh, can I see your .cc file? Yeah. Oh, okay, you commented out the, the other lines, right? Yeah, I comment all the other lines. Okay. Uh, have you add the the options to your .info file? Ah, yeah, maybe that's the problem. I haven't that, done that yet. Uh, yeah, let me try that. Info under the luminosity, right? Yes, it's a good place. Then you have to have a space between. Yeah, space, dash, space. Okay, let's try again. There is still the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see your dot, uh, your run analysis dot sh. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, your folder is inside the Rivet analysis folder, right? Uh, yes. yes. Mm. Oh, I'm missing, I'm missing something, yeah, sorry, that's it. Uh, I'm missing a... Uh, uh, yeah, I think now it should be fun. Let me try. Okay, it compiled this time. Okay, so after this, I can upload, I can commit my yes. Okay, thanks. I'll stop sharing. Okay, so if I understand, then you're ready to commit. Uh, yes. Please go ahead and commit. And let me ask as well. There were a few people who did commit already, um, who. Uh, I think didn't raise their hand. Yes. Um, so if you are, if you have committed, please raise your hand. Yes. So because that helps me keep track of who is up to speed. And then um, 
I see, I see that Ajita has had her hand raised. Uh, um, but I have let some question. Actually. Yeah, that's why. So um, I'm getting like when I run my analysis at the end, I'm getting some warning saying like um, setting the option beam to gold gold 200 for um, Phoenix 2016, whatever the name of the rebate analysis is, has not been declared in the info file. So I need to declare that in the info file. Uh, you don't need to do this now. At some point, we are going to do it. So it's okay uh, to have this warning? You can remove the flag, uh, column bin equals uh, gold gold or p gold that you have. Uh, okay, I run... just removed the uh, cent equals to gen, but I didn't remove the This one you have to keep. Cent equals gen, uh, it will set the centrality. Okay, so I removed that one. That's fine, right? Which one? The, the beam? Uh, both the beam. Uh, now I'm removing the beam, but I already removed the cent equals to gem. Yeah, you can uh, remove the beam, but keep the cent. Okay, uh, so my analysis does not have any results that are centrality dependent, but it's, it's a gold, gold. Yeah, it's gold, gold. If it's so gold, gold, you still need bias. centrality. Okay. If it's gold, gold, you still need centrality because you're there's going to be some type of implicit centrality dependence. Mm -hmm. okay. That is that even for for star min bias runs zero to eighty percent, and for Phoenix it runs zero to ninety two percent. But there is an implicit centrality dependence, and so what what the centrality projection uh, what the centrality calibration does is um, that Antonio dug through papers and the, the gold standard for implementing centrality is, in a model is to treat it exactly the way that it's treated in the data. So um, for most star, most but not all star analyses, the centrality was determined at mid rapidity between a pseudo rapidity of plus or minus 0.5. And then by looking at the, um, it, it looks at the um, multiplicity in that region and you bin it. And so the 10% highest multiplicity um, events would be the zero to 10% most central. And, the, and then for Phoenix, it's using the beam beam counters. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to go and you look at the, you basically look at the multiplicity in that region and you bin the events in multiplicity in that region. Um, and the calibration file includes histograms from the same Monte Carlo that we're running on, which is Pythia Angantir. Mm -hmm. And um, then it tells you where, what multiplicities to cut on in order to get the right centrality bin. Okay. Um, and this is why we have to have calibration files for every data set. Um, and then you know you can set it to have different options so you can so you're allowing different options so that a user could for instance use the generators centrality bins instead of using um, using the bins in multiplicity so yeah. bin by uh, bin by impact parameter instead of you bin by multiplicity in the same region as the data okay so even when I take that out, I'm still getting warning saying um, analysis Phoenix 2016, um, the name of the analysis um, sent gen is unvalidated. Be careful, it may be broken. So that's fine. That's all right. Yes. And the other other warning that I'm getting is centrality projection C multi did not contain any valid percentile projections. This I think you should not have. I think maybe that's because I left some histogram. No generated calibration histogram for centrality projection C mult, C mult found requested histogram C mult in RIC 2019 centrality calibration experiment Phoenix. Sorry, I, I did not understand what you 
What so the there are like multiple warnings. Um, the first warning is analysis. Um, what I just told you, analysis Phoenix 2016 sent gen is unvalidated. Th this, is, this is fine. So that one is fine. And then yeah. there are uh, two other ones. Um, the second one is no generated calibration histogram for centrality projection C malt found. Yeah, this one you should not have. So okay. maybe you, we need to, to understand why. Uh, maybe, uh, can you share your .cc file? Um, sure, I'm working on a different computer. Let me just do that here and then. Do you see my screen? Yes. So this is my... Yeah, you have the header. So I took out everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you uh, add the options to your .info file? Uh, just the three centrality options, three or four. Yes, yeah. okay, that's good. So that's all the changes I made. Um, was I supposed to change something here also? Like I took out like the part that you suggested from here. Uh, okay, uh, do you have this uh, calibration Phoenix gold gold 200 GV dot Yoda in the in your working directory? Because otherwise you have to put the whole path to the file. Oh, I don't have that. Okay, so you... Where was I supposed to get that from? I'm sorry? Where was I supposed to get that from? Was that supposed to um, come with the... Like when I did git clone, was I was that supposed to already be there or? Uh, maybe not. But then let me. Um, okay, instead of only the name of the calibration file, uh, the path is you can use uh, dot dot slash centralities slash calibration slash and the name of your calibration file, like in slide twelve. Let me see the slide tool. I'll stop sharing the screen. Thank you. I'll let you know if that works. Okay, I think this will work, but please let, let us know. Okay, so I'm going to join the breakout room. People want. Yes, thank you. Because actually, I just asked Tomash to join you in the breakout room. Uh, and David, um, what's your question? And let me try to assess whether you belong in the same breakout room. Uh, sure. So my code runs. I don't get an output Yoda file. Like it's not generating the file blank or otherwise. Um, and I'm I'm not actually sure why. I think because you're not actually if you did it. So, so far, I believe in the instructions, it, I think it, so you're not actually making any histograms. You've removed the guts that declare histograms. Right. So I, I haven't, I think you shouldn't get a Yoda file okay. output. So fair. So in my text output, I get, I get a couple of warnings, but I get no errors. So I assume it's good because it runs. Yes. So, so this is where there's sort of a sweet spot. You want to keep people moving along and get code in because once people, once people have checked something in, we know that everybody is able to check something in and run something. Sure. And um, also, and so then, you know, if you guys have issues, 
because we're gonna have we're gonna get to the um to adding a histogram at the end of the by the end of today so then if you have issues and you need to work with people offline you can commit your code to the repository so someone can look at it okay this sounds good uh so yeah i will remove the the dot so file and uh if if the runway is cleared i will commit okay Ye Yes, just speak up when you're ready to commit to make sure we don't have two people doing it at exactly the same time. Okay, um, and maybe this is just displaying my Git ignorance, but don't I have to pull so yes. that I, I'm not going to get some sort of like, please fix uh, uh, whatever version and consistency. Yeah. yeah, you're going to pull first before you commit because other people have been committing. Right, but if I pull after someone's committed, then it's going to complain to yep. me about versions. Okay. If you don't pull after someone else is committed, it's going to complain to you. And because you're all editing different, if you were editing the same files, we could have issues with incompatibility and merging, but you're all editing different directories. So it's going to play nice with any edits from other people. Okay, sounds good. Um, Ajiro, so uh, what's your issue before I decide if you belong in the breakout room? Um, so I'm trying to copy um, a downloaded file from HepData to RCF, and I'm doing S copy, and it doesn't seem to. Um, so it timed out, and it seems to be that. Um, okay, I'm not sure what S copy is, but uh, I can tell you that I use the gateway um, here. Um, and it has always worked for me, and it worked for me yesterday. Okay. And then you just SSH the way you normally would. Yeah, but I mean, assuming that you go to have data on your regular desktop and you download the file, and yeah, and so I have the other file on my desktop that yeah. I want on RCF. So I try to copy that directory to RCF. Yes. And but then I'm getting connection error when I try to do that. Um, are, you tr timeout. <laughs> are you trying to use the regular gateway the same way that you log in for SSH to RCF to work? Right. It doesn't work. Uh, they don't does want people. They don't want people using that for file transfers. Okay. Um, so you have to use the server that I put the RFTP EXP. Oh. Uh, where is that written? I just typed, oh, dang it. I did the wrong, it defaults to, okay. It's now in the chat in Zoom. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, let's see, I think that's sort of similar to what I did. Uh, uh, similar, but di you have to use a different server. So make oh, sure so you're you using- the connect, connect first to that and then SSH or- are you, is your laptop running Windows or? It's, it's Mac, it's a Mac. Okay, so then you should be able to do something like scp myfile.yoda. Yeah, that's um, what I did. With that same, with that same file name or did you use the same gateway that you use for logging into SSH? To log in into work. My screen. I think it'll be easier. Okay, yes. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, um, so this is this, this is the line. If you can, you see my terminal. This is the line that I just ah, used. You okay? Interesting. I do not know why it's timing out. Do you actually have on RCF, do you have the the directory slash capital U users or is that the 
So no, the users is my desktop. Like my okay. Okay. Desktop. So so uh, just a second. Let me. Um, I I have come to love this drawing on screen thing. Um, okay. So this is looking on RCF. This is looking on RCF for that path, and that path doesn't exist on RCF. So ah, the, way, okay. the way that I would usually do it, because I am, I am lazy and I do not like trying to figure out the path, is I would replace all of that by a tilde, which puts it in your home directory, forward slash, and then a dot. Okay. And that is going to copy it to your home directory on RCF, and from there you can move it to wherever you want. Okay. Okay, I'll try that. Um, well, so I can just do that now, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and while you're doing that, David, are you asking to commit? Because you were almost ready to commit. Um, yes, I am ready to push, if I may. Go ahead. Go ahead and push. What is the hepmc underscore file dot hepmc supposed to be? Because it's complaining like when i um like i it says could not read the file so what file is that supposed to be um are you asking I, so i'm not sure i understand the question so in slide 12 like uh, at the very end of the command read it minus uh, well at the very end of the um bash file um ah. provide hepmc underscore file dot hepmc so Yes, you are right. That is um, the so um, on that line when you copied the run analysis from the other directory, mm -hmm. it pointed to so the one the one that's on the slides is looking for um, is looking for it in your current working directory. Mm -hmm. And when so you I was supposed to copy that also, if it um, no, you don't need to copy it, but um, you want instead, um, instead of that, yeah, I think I will change in the slide. Okay, maybe this will not be. You want the one that I just put into the um chat. You replace, I should have called it .hepmc, but I didn't. I see, um, okay. And if you look at the online version of the slides, Antonio is editing it right now. Okay, sure. Takahito, I think you checked in, you committed already, right? So can you raise your hand and click yes? Thank you. Uh, so I got a commit error. Is this just me being dopey on my end with my get mm -hmm. username password? Maybe. Um, it depends on the error. OK. Oh, I see your chat. OK. Ah, I wonder if possibly I, let me make sure that you have, that I gave you access. You have a pending invitation, but it looks like you haven't um, accepted yet. Uh, okay. I think the easiest might be if I, I'm gonna retract the invitation and then invite you again, because I think you get another email. Uh, let me say, I just Googled for an invitation, GitHub education. I just, sent you okay. another invitation so i think oh okay i just got it i will okay. uh, be sure to that's the it. problem Thanks. okay and locos go ahead and commit yes and then when you guys have committed raise your hand so i can keep track of who is done okay thanks
Yes, Will? Oh, that was a... Sorry, I was raising to say that we've, uh, Charles and I have committed. Oh, okay. Uh, can both of you raise your hands? Yeah. Just, um, or sorry, uh, click yes, not raise your hand. Yes, okay. And then I think, um, so Locos is actively committing, I believe. So Locos, when you're done, say something and Ajita will go next. Okay. Is that an okay, you're done or? <laughs> no, it's an okay, I'm working, I understand. Okay, okay, the okay, okay. Uh, Zendong, your hand is raised. Is that to request a commit? Mm, I'm oh. not sure. Uh, I run the, the best uh, run analysis star SH and I got some warn. Uh, Warnings are probably okay. Warning is about the scent or the beam. Okay, I'm going to defer to Antonio. Yeah, you, you have this flag uh, that you pass using a column beam equals something. Uh, you can remove this part. You leave only the column scent equal uh, gem. Uh, remove the, the beam parameter after gem. Yes. Okay. And then it will probably not give you warnings. Um, one last question. So this uh, so-called simulation, you know, the last argument in the last line, uh, is it the test files pass the uh, gold, gold file? I mean, I found only this one. Uh, you can test. I changed uh, a couple of minutes ago the, the slide 12. Uh, you can test using this. Uh, it's inside the test files folder. This picture go go file small test dot dot. If you want to be sure, you can just look at again on slide 12 because I just updated. It's a very, it's a very small. small file just a few minutes oh okay okay i will try thank you but i think i'm almost perfect great. uh hi i have a question about the hp.mc file so. uh-huh yeah, where is this file come from? So it's actually in the, um, so hang on just a second. So Ajita, go ahead and commit. Um, so the, the, in the Git repository for the purposes of testing and development, we committed, we made um, small, a small number of files so that uh, that's a, I think 10 events for gold gold at 200 GV just so that you can run the code. So if you are using the, um, if you're using the code as Antonio's current version of slide 12, then it will run over those 10 events. So you don't have to worry about getting some type of small test sample. Um, but um, I, I, I found an error. It has uh, cannot read from this file. So, um, Can you maybe go ahead and share your screen? Uh, yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, you see this line. At the end of the compile, it says cannot read from the file. Oh yeah, this file doesn't exist because it's, yeah, you have to maybe look at slide twelve um, because I changed the the name because I think it was creating some confusion. 
Uh, in fact, you have a file in the test files directory. So you just change your uh, run alice.sh to point to this one. Okay, I just need to... Change the last file to yes. this one. Um, This test files. It's missing a S. Yes, I think it's this file. Um, I need to resubmit, recommit to the Git repository. Yeah, you can. Maybe update in your Git repository. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's just fine. Is fine. Okay. okay. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I need to read with me. Okay, uh, maybe you just have to wait to see if okay, yeah. uh, somebody is committing right now. Okay. So I'm trying to commit, but I think my GitHub account does not have permission. Ah, uh, okay. So send me your username. We're gonna move on to David first, then. So just put your username in the um, in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I pushed. I think I'm okay. Ah, okay. So then Locos. Okay, I'm doing it then. Hi, uh, so Antonio, actually, I think we need your help for this, uh, uh, for uh, Tomas's stuff. So, I mean, he, so the reason his code wasn't running was actually because he didn't have the, uh, he didn't have, he didn't have an input file, but now there's some centrality issues that he wants to check. So there's a star centrality to put it in there. So maybe, maybe you can talk about that. Okay. okay. Uh, is he in the breakout room or is... I'm here. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe you want to uh, share your screen so we can see what's happening. Okay. Uh, I am sharing my screen. Okay, uh, can I see your .cc file? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so you include the, the header, so you have this uh, folder centralities in your Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think this would be a problem because you're using Docker and it will only see your working directory. So maybe yes. you copy the header to your working directory and remove that uh, centrality from the, the include. So, Antonio, we, we actually copied, so we copied the entire directory in there and changed because you keep the, the, the calibration Yoda files, right? Yes, this also we need. So that's yeah, why I copied it. I, I asked him to copy the directory and it's still having some issues there. Yeah, but I think Docker will not be able to to, to see other uh, directory that's not your working directory. So it can see stuff inside the working directory. If you have multiple directories inside the directory, it, it, it can see that. It, it just can't see stuff okay. inside it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, it's 
this would be fine. Um, so can I see your uh, uh, your dot info? Have you included the, the option? Uh, yeah, uh, so the options in my uh, run. Yeah, I basically uh, deleted the option for the centrality since I have. I okay, it's when, a... I, when I was uh, doing the data, there, uh, there was no information about centrality. Okay, so, so, uh, so uh, see, you so have you this have minus a, a star 2010, uh, and then after the expired number, you have to add. Um, Column and then sent equal gem. Yeah, is you mean this this file from the example? Uh, yeah, I think it's your. Uh, maybe you can uh, remove this uh, and. And after, yes, after the inspired number, you put, okay, yeah, you can paste the, 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 the simulation file there, but then you go back to your start 2010 and the inspired number, you have to add the flag. So how you do this? You do a column, sent. Not vent, sent. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. Yes, maybe you can try again now. Okay, yeah, uh, no options. Ah, okay, so, um, okay, but it found the calibration, so the centrality part, it's fine. I think you just have something related to leptons in your code that it's not um, okay. I... because you remove the, uh, everything from the init part. Yeah, from the environment, everything. So I, I also need to remove everything from uh, this analysis. Yeah, inside the analysis and also from the finalize, you can uh, remove everything. Okay. Yes. Great. Yes, yeah, so it seems now that it's working. Yeah, I think you're good. Okay, so then it sounds like you are ready to commit. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so and then... Can I commit? Sorry, go ahead. Yes, go ahead and commit. Um, and we have a raised hand from Wei Huang. Uh, yes, I, I cracked something and I want to recommit. Ah, okay, so wait until... Um, wait until you hear from Tomash that he has committed, okay? Okay. Um, and then let me go down the line. So we are at 1120. I think the last content session won't take too long. Um, and I think we'll have to decide whether we move ahead. I think that most of the people who are not yet caught up are in the US and so hanging out online a little longer wouldn't necessarily, you know, it's not like we're asking people to stay up until uh, three o'clock in the morning. Um, so maybe let's just do a check-in with everybody and then we may proceed and then stay on and let everybody else out and proceed with the people who are a little stuck. So Austin, I think you got your assignment <clears throat> a little bit late, <clears throat> but uh, where are you? 
<laughs> I am making the working directory right now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. and yeah, so yeah, so we'll not hold up for you. No, do, do not hold up for me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, Daniel? Daniel? Hi, I got three warnings here. Besides that, it's fine. Okay, the are the warnings about, but what are your warnings? And I, well, let me just based on the chat box, I think it's easier. Okay. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> the, the, to read, the first warning is standard and happens because your analysis has not been blessed by the collaboration. It will, you'll see that everybody will see that warning throughout the entire workshop. Um, the second one um, should not happen and might mean you're pointing to the wrong calibration file. The, both the, the second and third mean you're that's an Antonio question, because I think it means you're pointing to the wrong calibration file. Yeah, Thank you. possibly. Um, maybe you can share your screen so we can have a look. Sure. Can I see your .cc file? Okay, you have the header. You have the line neat. Um, okay, uh, have you added the, the options to your .info file? I think so. Okay, it's there. And can I see your run analysis.sh? Oh, okay, uh, your calibration file, uh, it's missing uh, the path, unless you copy this file to your working directory, uh, there where you have minus P, calibration underscore Phoenix. Yeah, on slide 12, you, you have the, the path. Um, you can maybe just put uh, dot dot slash centrality slash calibration. It's capital C and centrality. Uh, just this. Uh, maybe you can just copy paste from slide. Okay, this is good. working. So I'll stop sharing here. Okay. I stop sharing here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so based on the chat, I think it is possible that Krista and Zen and Zen are both ready to commit. Um, yes, Zen, on the um, analyze function should be empty right now. We're we'll start adding stuff uh, tomorrow, but we just want for now. We're trying to get a functional piece of code. So with that in mind, I, Krista and Zendong, do you th guys think you're ready to commit? I guess I'm not sure what, you know, I missed this section, so I'm not really sure what we're looking for, but I mean, I can certainly commit it and you can take a look at it, I guess. Okay, so let's start with Zendong. Ah, Zendong already committed. Okay, so then can you click yes? Um, so that I can keep track of it. Um, so Krista, we're trying to get everybody to the point where they have added centrality um, and well, so that they're basically caught up with what is now slide uh, 15. And okay. the point of having people committed is everybody can commit and that everything's working smoothly. Everybody can run. Um, the code doesn't do much at this point. Um, but it's at least there. Okay, so I'm so going to take. Should... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. I, it sounds like you're maybe not quite caught up. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Then we'll we'll catch you up after the end of the next section, I think. So Ajiro, it sounds like maybe um, Raghav got got you caught up. Are you ready to commit? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I uh, know I'm, I'm you're now able to work on the Yoda file. Yeah, got the Yoda file. There. <laughs> so okay. I'm like a few flies behind. But but let me okay. ask you a quick question: What's going on on slide eleven? with says centrality. Um, but I mean, I totally missed that um, description. But I mean, okay. So um, when you have any type of analysis, heavy ion analysis, you need to somehow figure out the centrality because basically all heavy ion analyses, at least implicitly, use centrality somehow. So um, you need to, you can use um, impact parameters from the generator, although the gold standard is to treat centrality exactly the same way that you treat it in the data, which means that um, for the experiments, they look at the multiplicity in a given pseudorapidity region, and then they bin events in terms of the highest multiplicity to the lowest multiplicity. So that the top 10, the zero to 10% most central collisions have are the 10% of all collisions that have the highest multiplicity. So what Antonio has done is to write a class which does this for all of for both Star and Phoenix. And you guys are using that class to calibrate your data and get your centralities. And we've sort of hidden the guts of what it's doing from you. So at this point, what you're doing is that you're just adding that line and cutting the guts out of Anna analyze and finalize so that the code at least runs and and um, you're going to go back and write the guts of the analysis later. Okay, so but what's the name of that file and where is it? It's in the git repository one directory up. Um, oh. And that's why you're adding it as an uh, include in your .cc file. Okay. So I think we have, um, so let me do a quick check in. I think that we are probably almost, I'm, I'm going to ask again, if you have checked stuff in, please click yes so I can keep track. Um, Stacy Ann, where are you? I still have to get my hip data. 
Okay. Um, you can proceed without the HEP data fully working. We won't hold everybody up for that right now. Um, Yang He. Hi, um, I'm trying to comment, but uh, the permission denied for me. Ah, please uh, send me your GitHub username. Ah, you just did. Okay. And I... Okay, so I think that what we should do um, is proceed and then we'll hang out and try to catch, uh, ah, Yang He, you have a pending invitation. I'm gonna delete it so that you um, get it again. Um, so I'm gonna cancel the invitation and then invite you again. Um, okay, and I think then Yang He, I believe then you can come, you you were in, trying to commit, so I go ahead and commit, um, and then Antonio. I think we'll proceed to the end and assign the homework, and then stick around to catch people up. Okay, so uh, we will move on to the final slides of the day, uh, and I think uh, we start with something that would be very important, which is the histograms. So, but first, uh, let's see your, what you have in your .cc. Probably all of you uh, already uh, had a look and changed some things, especially in the init. Uh, in the init part, we declare the, the centrality, but it's where we declare all the projections. For example, uh, the kinds of particles that you are going to use, or other um, tools that you need in your uh, analysis. For example, if you need jets, you're going to declare here in the init part. Also, uh, one of the most important parts, it's the booking of histograms. So all the histograms of your rivet analysis will be booked here in the init. Uh, you also have in your .cc the analyze part that it's basically, um, it will loop over all the events in your uh, simulation file. And here we will also uh, do the main part of your analysis, uh, particle loops and jets, you're going to loop uh, over them here. Um, and also a few of the histograms will be also uh, done here in the analyze part. And in the finalize, uh, we're going to do uh, normalizations and ratios. So that's the basic uh, structure of the rivet analysis. And after finalize, you probably have uh, something like this showed here in the, the yellow box, uh, which is uh, the your histograms uh, declared here as maps. So uh, this uh, underscore H, it's uh, uh, histo 1D. Uh, it's a one dimensional uh, histogram. And you're going to uh, book these histograms uh, using uh, a string to, uh, to, to differentiate between different histograms if this histogram is not uh, on uh, your data yet. I will show more about this in a minute. Uh, and we have other kinds of histograms, profile 1D, that when it's filled, it will calculate the, the, the average, the, the mean. And also counters. Uh, counters will be very important for normalization. Um, many of your histograms uh, will require uh, the normalization by a number of events. So we're going to use this counter to make this normalization. Especially if you're working with different centralities, you have to have one uh, counter for each centrality interval. Okay, so uh, in the init, um, as I said, there will be a lot of things, but most of, the, of you already re uh, removed what comes uh, with the with the .cc when you do rivet make analysis. And 
as I said, we uh, declare um, projections in the init. For example, here uh, I'm declaring a projection of final state particles. And I'm also uh, requiring that the particles have uh, absolute value of pseudo rapidity less than uh, 4.9. Uh, it's an, an example. Of course, this uh, acceptance will be different depending on your experiment, if it's a star or phoenix, and also very specific of your paper. And OK, so here uh, it's a very important uh, part how you book your histograms, you use this uh, method book, and then you pass your histo 1D underscore age, and you select uh, a string that makes sense for you and in your analysis. And then you have here three parameters, and here you see one, one, one. Um, I have a quick question, Antonio. Sure. Um, are you allowed spaces inside your string or no? I will not try that. Okay. Uh, you can use underscore, for example, if you okay. want to separate parts. Thank you. But... Sorry to interrupt. Um, okay, so you have these three parameters, one, one, one. And this is related to your data uh, on HEP data or uh, inside your uh, .yoda file. And how this will relate is that uh, the first uh, one here, it's related to the first table in HEP data. The second is related to the X axis in, in, your, uh, in, in your data. And the third is the Y axis in your table. So uh, if you want to book a histogram that has the same binning uh, of your uh, of, of the histogram in your data, that's how you do it. So if you want to book the, the histogram in the second table, for example, that follows this pattern uh, D, X, and Y, you just use, for example, 2, 1, 1. It's, it will be the second table, uh, the first X axis, and the first Y axis. OK, so to, to be more clear, uh, this is basically what you see uh, on HEP data. You have uh, your table. Uh, you have here an X axis. For example, here is PT. And you, uh, we, you maybe have many uh, Y axis. So uh, if you book like this, one, 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 it's the first table, uh, the first X axis. And if it's one, it's related to this uh, y, x. Uh, and you can book the same way uh, for the uh, y equals 2, y equals 3, and so on. Just changing here uh, this number, which is uh, connected to this y axis. So by doing this, you can book all the histograms in your uh, data. Uh, just looking at the data, how the, the tables are organized, or looking at your dot uh, yoda that you have with your data. Um, but there are cases where you need, uh, maybe you need a histogram that it's not uh, in your data, uh, because you need maybe uh, to store some distribution to extract some value. So in Rivet, it's also possible to declare histograms that are not connected to a specific histogram in your data. And how do you do this? Uh, it's showed here. You have your object underscore h, and then you can choose a string that makes sense in your analysis. Uh, the second argument, it's another string. Uh, not necessarily equals to the one you use here to uh, in your histogram object, but I think it's uh, a, a good. It's good to have the same for organizational uh, reasons. And then the next argument it's the number of bins in your histogram. Um, the minimum uh, bin in your histogram and the max value of your histogram. So if you're familiar with root, it's something similar that you choose the number of bins and the 
minimum and maximum. Um, also, you can use uh, a vector uh, instead of passing uh, the number of beams, minimum and maximum. You just pass a vector with your bins. Uh, this is good because you can create uh, histograms uh, with beams that are not all the same. So if you have la wider beans in, in than others in, in your histogram, you can just declare it like this. Okay, so uh, as I said, there are other uh, kinds of histograms that you can use. For example, the profile uh, 1D that calculates the, the average of uh, quantity that you uh, give to this histogram and counters uh, that, as I said, would be very important. So um, profile 1D, you declare in a very similar way that the histo 1D. So if you want to connect it to a histogram in data, you will use this code uh, that refers to the, the table, the y-axis and uh, the x-axis and the y-axis in your data. Or you can just select number of beans and minimum and maximum or as uh, a vector to declare the, the history. Uh, for the counter, um, you pass here the, the object, the counter, and you just select uh, a string. You, you, this counter uh, it doesn't use bins, so it will just store something that uh, you're counting in your uh, in your analysis. We are going to show how, how to use this in the analyze part later. And also uh, the global variables, when you created your analysis using uh, Rivet make analysis, it already uh, came with some global variables. Uh, I think you don't have uh, the counter there, but you can include, uh, like showed here. Uh, yes, okay. Um, what if you need a ratio? Uh, ratio plots, they are very common. Um, and one uh, recipe to do this is shown here in this uh, yellow box. Uh, basically, you're going to pass uh, the code of, your, of the histogram in your data using this command, make access code. It will create a string. Uh, then you declare this uh, scatter to D, it will be your reference. And then you're going to have uh, three histograms one histo 1D, for example, if you want to, uh, to fill with the uh, PT distribution of kaons and another for pions when you, where you're going to fill with the pion uh, PT distribution. And then you have uh, this scatter 2D that you declare here and just pass the ref name. Uh, this will be a scatter 2D that will receive your, uh, your, uh, the division of these two histograms. So here is uh, just an example how you declare the histograms that you're going to need for uh, a, a ratio plot. Uh, all of them uh, underscore HK underscore H pion and underscore S K on over pion. All of them will have the same binning. Uh, so this is very good. You don't uh, you don't have this risk of uh, selecting different binnings for your plots, and then you're going to have problems when you try to divide. Often we'll have the same binning that you have in data. Okay, so um, I think here we have a homework which is trying to declare. Uh, the histograms uh, that you have in your paper and in your uh, data uh, in the init part using uh, basically this system of booking uh, and connecting uh, the codes that you have uh, in your data. Uh, the tables, uh, the y and x axis of each uh, histogram. And okay, I think that's the end of day one. Uh, I know that uh, 
it could require some some work to book all the histograms, especially if you have a long paper. Uh, so, yeah, but that's I think a very important part of the of the rivet analysis. I think we should probably say that we don't want uh, every change you do. You probably shouldn't commit it, right? Yeah, it may. It makes sense to commit significant changes. Right. Yeah. And like probably one commit a day is when you're actively working is a good idea. Um, we can run into issues, which is why we tried to coordinate the commits, where if everybody is trying to commit at the same time uh is random luck whether you committed exactly before someone else could do a commit so because git complains if there's other stuff in the repository that you do not have on your local cop in your local version um now those of you who have committed already um it would be i would recommend that you stick around and try to book one histogram from your yoda file while we are still here to help interactively. That was the intention. Um, we only have 13 minutes left. Um, most of you probably can do it. Now that doesn't mean you have to commit it to the repository, but if you've been able to book a histogram and run your code again, that means that you know how to book the histogram and that it works. Um, I have a question. So um how do you know you have booked your histogram and um, that's a good question um for now we're gonna go with it runs and it doesn't give you any errors um when we get to tomorrow so so far um it may not feel like you've done a lot but you've actually done a lot um, tomorrow we're going to talk about understanding each of the components and I believe by the end of the day we have you actually make the plots. Um, now you can if you are uh, eager you can run I'm going to put the command it's on slide 33 um, you can run this command and it should work. Um, the catch I'm going to give you is that it's sensitive to whether or not you have LaTeX installed correctly on your system and whether everything plays nicely with each other. So there's a chance that it won't work out of the box. If you, if you are working on RCF and you have followed the directions to the letter, it should work. And if you've got your HEP data, um, working it will at least make a plot with the data from the paper okay but there's a lot of pieces that might not work um for today if it works and it runs and it doesn't give you any errors we're gonna call it good and many of you will actually have um this first histogram uh, with an index of 111. So for many of you, you can probably just try copying and pasting. Let me find the right line. Um, uh, I think Antonio, yeah. So you're it, on this slide that Antonio's brought up. The one thing that you'll need to change is that uh, this should be, if this exists, oh, what is it? X01, Y01. So that will probably work. That yeah, would be. It's not necessary, but for organization, you could use this string here. Okay. But you can choose a string that makes sense for you in your analysis instead of a a a a. Yeah. 
So for most of you, that may work. But now I think I emailed people individually, but it may not have entirely been clear. There are plots you can't implement in Rivet and you're not even gonna try. So for instance, some of you may have had detector efficiencies. That doesn't make any, that it, you cannot calculate a detector efficiency in a standalone Monte Carlo model. So you're not even gonna try to do that histogram. But if you find a histogram, like probably at least half of you have single particle spectra. So just declaring, you know, trying to book a single, one of the histograms for single particle spectra, make sure it works. That would be a useful thing to do. And otherwise, I think um, now we have a few people who are a little bit behind for a variety of reasons. Um, I think for the people who got caught up with the last exercise where you are actually, you have committed your code and you've got centrality, um, let me suggest you try to do this histogram booking and raise any issues. And then I'm gonna ask if you are not, whether or not you're caught up, if you actively need one-on-one -on -one help or are stuck on something, put it in the chat so I know how to direct you. Otherwise, I'm going to go down the list and call on people. Okay, so Krista, I'm going to put you in, well, I'm going to put Krista in a Jiro in the, well, you're both already assigned to breakout room with Raghav. Raghav, can you go um, help them? Sure. Thank you. All right. I'm going to guess that Austin, you probably are not quite caught up yet. Uh, that's right. I think I might be ready to commit. Um, OK, then go ahead and commit. That's fantastic. OK. All right. And Charles, I'm going to guess because you, Charles and Will, I'm going to guess because you guys worked ahead that you guys are fine. Yeah, we're going through and booking all our histograms right now. Yeah, you guys have a giant stack of them, don't you? Yeah, it's how many did you say it was when you did the control F, Charles? Like 400 or something? It, yeah, it's like 480. <laughs> it's, so uh, we're, we're on it. We might be done by tomorrow morning. Yeah. You write a script. Mm. I, I guess, always tell my yeah, we could somehow like write a Perl script or something. But, uh, I suggested using grep to try to find like, yeah, but I, th I think we got it. I, I think okay. we figured out a way that works. Okay. I always tell the students in my class that a good physicist is a lazy physicist much to their amusement. And then they sometimes throw that back at me at opportune times. Um, okay, Ajita, where are you? I just booked one Instagram and that's it. Did it work? Uh, it didn't complain, so I assume it did. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, so then you may stay called in if you think you, if you're going to work on it now. Um, and 
then uh, if you, um, but you may log out and then we're going to have, because we have people also following the Slack in different time zones. So you can ask mm -hmm. questions on the Slack. Okay. So the goal is to um, like for each table in the hip, MC hip data, then uh, I just uh, basically go through each table and create a histogram for all of them. Yes, within reason. So for most of the tables, with yeah, one ex like you exception. Yeah. Yeah, if it's one that does not make sense to implement in Rivet, skip it. Okay, sure. So, and then um, from there, we'll work tomorrow, okay. Yes, so then tomorrow, we're actually going to start working on the guts of the analysis. Okay, thank you. I think I'll just leave right now and then... Okay, cool. This. Yes. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. All right, and Zendong, yes. So the for so first of all, in case it is useful, you will find on to on the agenda for today, at the very top, that there is a link to slides on Git, which basically has one slide, which is my everything. This is what I give my undergrads. This is everything you need to know about Git. Um, like the five, ten, the, the about five commands. Um, now, the only thing when you're committing for a second time, you have to do git. Well, you probably should do git pull first. Well, you should do git pull just to make sure that you have the latest version because there's a lot of people committing to this repository. Second, you're going to do um, git um, commit minus m add a useful comment, and then the name of the file. Um, and then you're going to do git push. So actually, the ideal um, order is git commit minus m my file, my comment files Ah, I s Zoom defaults to sending to the latest person who sent you a message. So there are the three commands if you want to actually commit a file that is already in the repository. The difference is that git add means that git is going to start tracking a file. So if you're adding a new file, you have to do the git add command. Um, Okay, but you don't necessarily need to commit if your changes are small. As Raghav was saying, you don't need to commit every little thing. Um, Daniel, how are things going? Yes, I guess I only have to commit right now, right? Um, if you, well, if you have something that is ready to commit. Were you still at the first commit stage? Uh, yes. OK. Yeah, I think nobody is committing right now. But you want to do git pull because I think that somebody else just committed. And then I would say try to book a histogram. Moving down the list, David. How are things going? Um, well, I mean, I've committed. As for booking histograms, I need to finish getting my data into YAML files. So I'm working okay. away on that, and then hopefully this will go brilliantly once I'm there. OK. And we've got people, uh, you know, I think you emailed me about uh, HEP data. I obviously wasn't responding during this. Right. Um, I will try to respond during the afternoon. We have a faculty meeting. It's a lovely time for that. I didn't say that. Um, so uh, yeah, ask for help if you get stuck. Um, and then I okay, that sounds great. I think I, I have good optimism I'm going to get there. I mean, there can always be some like fidgety thing, but I, I, think, I think I'm going to get there. Good. Yes. Okay. Thanks. 
All right, Krista, I think you just came out of the, you were in the breakout room with Raghav until recently. Yes, yes, he took a look at um, what I have and I guess he said it looks okay. Okay, have you, I forget, you had committed or no? I have not committed. Okay. Um, if you can try to commit and try to book a histogram and the order doesn't matter so much. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll do that. Cool. Um, Charles, you already said, I think. I already, I started with you guys. Um, Locos? Yeah, I actually, my data is not in have data, so. Uh, that's right, that's right. And I was gonna try to deal with that. Yes. Yeah, there is anything I can, anything I can do in advance? Yeah, you, can, you can't do the histogram booking without HEP data. Yeah, actually, I just inserted a piece of code in the main code and it actually just gives two warnings about the missing data. Yeah. So. Okay, so then you are at a point where you need those data first. Yes, I will probably. try to get them. The good news is if I get it done during the day today, that tomorrow in you'll get them in the morning for Europe. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Thanks. All right, Stacy Ann. Yes. So I did do Git pull to get the updates for the YAML maker, but I still don't get the negative values in the YAML file. Okay. So I think we may have to, I think you also emailed me. Right. Um, let me look at it. Um, I put it with my hand, but it gave me arrows. <laughs> Okay, so let me let me look at it. Um, it may take me a little bit to get to it. Um, but then you can't do a histogram booking. You can't book histograms until you, well, you may be able to book one. Yeah, it, let's not go down that road because it probably gets more complicated to figure out why, uh, how to get it to work around various issues than just to do it. So I think then you're probably at a stopping point for the day. Yes, unless I comment out this second graph, because the first one works. Ah, okay. So then, <laughs> then I think if you can, can do it all but one plot, then you're in good shape. Because it means you know how to do stuff. Okay. And that's, that's the goal. Okay, I will comment this one out and work with the first one. Excellent. Okay, thank you. All right, and then going down the line, Takahito. Yes, I, I just filled the tip uh, profile one day. It seems something is failed, but uh, I don't know how to interpret these numbers. Uh, you, you filled it? Yeah, it seems it worked somehow, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I, if, yeah. you, if you filled it, you're far ahead, okay. mm -hmm. as opposed to just booking it. So I so think anyway. we'll call we'll call filling filling something. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, it's working. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, then it's probably not worth it for you to hang around any longer. Okay. Today. Yeah. Good. Tamash. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, the booking is working, so I just need to book all the histograms today. Yep. Uh, ideally before tomorrow's session is the idea because tomorrow we're going to go over how you fill the guts of analyze and so since the and booking histograms is kind of grunt work but we don't want you to leave it behind leave it to the last minute because it could be a lot of grunt work yeah uh just a question uh, should i uh, uh push the these changes to, to get up or not, not for today? Um, you, may, you may push them, but you don't have to. Okay, thank you. 
the the goal of pushing i i guess i view pushing things to the repository as one goal is if you get stuck somewhere and you want someone to look at your analysis if it's in the repository we can look at it one goal is that it serves as a backup so that if suddenly for whatever reason your stuff gets deleted you don't have to start from scratch so then you can if everybody's committing all at once you can run into issues that can be a little tricky to resolve uh ways huang yes i think i have booked a histogram and um, i produced a plot using the command you send and uh, it looks like uh yeah Mm, it looks like the histogram is it's kind of weird yeah but i produce a histogram yeah. okay weird at this point is okay okay so i, I will book the other histograms um cool and i think if you've done one then you're in pretty good shape okay uh, Yang? Is it Yang or He or Yang He? Which? It's Yang. Yang? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Where are you? Um, so I still can't push that uh, um, last step. So I just go ahead with the histogram. Okay. okay. So we should try to work out. Y you got an error with pushing yes um i think that daniel was about to push so now's not a good time uh when daniel can you confirm when you've pushed and then um we're gonna try to work with yang to get her stuff pushed okay daniel is done now so can you do git pull please yang and then try again It still didn't work. It has uh, the same error. Which error was that again? Um, you have not concluded your merge. Okay, so I think what you have, to, okay. So um, I think the easiest way to fix this is probably to go to another directory. I think, well, let me, The, the issue is that with Git repositories, sometimes they can get in real weird states. And so then you have to decide if it is worth it to try to recover that version of the Git repository, or if you should just make a different clone and start from scratch. Um, now, all of your work is in your, um, working directory. So um, I I think, well, first of all, let me, this one I think is going to take someone walking you through a bit one-on-one. -on -one. So let me say people who have um, already booked a histogram and, or, and know what to do next or are waiting on HEP data um, and but before they can book a histogram, you guys are free to go. Um, and there's not necessarily, a, you are welcome to stay, but it's probably gonna be very specific to individuals. So um, you probably should go unless you think you might have a question um, while we're still hanging around. All right, so Yang, what I would like you to do is to make a new directory. Um, actually, let me have you share your screen. And are you working on RCF? Yes, but uh, not on the same computer. So I don't think ah. I can share that. Okay, okay. So um, 
what I would like you to do um, is something like this. You're going to make another directory. I don't care what you call it. Um, and then you are going to change to that directory. I'm putting I'm putting stuff into the chat. Okay. And then you are going to make another clone of the repository. So that this clone is in a different spot. Krista, if you're ready to commit, I think you should go ahead and commit because I think you'll probably be faster. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so basically what you're going to do, I tried to put step by step commands, but you're going to, so you clone, make another clone of the, the repository. That's what you're doing with git clone. Uh, oh, I, yeah, after the git clone, you're going to have to change to rivet analyses. I skipped that step. And then you're going to have to copy the entire working directory from your other um, Git repository. And you're going to commit it from this copy of the um, Git repository. And I realize I have a couple stupid, if I try to, let me, let me pause and say, where are you? in those in following various steps. I'm trying to copy my previous code in the new directory. OK, so it should be in rivet analyses. So in my directions after git clone, I should have said CD rivet analyses before you copy everything. Oh, OK. Okay, how are things going, Yang? Um.
So the Git pool is outside the directory for my analysis code or are you working on RCF? Yes. Okay. Um, what's your username on oh, RCF? Yeah. Yang He. Okay. And you are in Phoenix, right? No, okay. in Star. Oh, but I can see your home directory. Okay. Do you have your code in your home directory? Home directory. Uh, I, should I send you the pass? Yes, oh, please. Sorry. Okay. Okay, great. So I'm going to steal the screen share and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Um, all right. So here I am on RCF. Actually, I should probably, I was doing stuff in this when I should probably be in here. Okay. So now I am going to go into my home directory um, where I have a copy of this rivet analyses um, repository. And the first thing I'm going to do is git pull because people have been doing stuff. So I'm going to make sure I have the latest. Um, and then if I look at your directory, I can see your directory. And which one is your analysis? I see it's your star. OK, so it's this one right here. Is that right? Yes. OK, thank you. All right, so what I am going to do is copy. this en entire thing. So this is what I was trying to walk you through doing, but it's kind of hard when I can't make sure that I know it, when I can't see your screen because I can't make sure that you're doing exactly what I think you should be doing, especially when I'm making stupid, I'm forgetting important parts. Okay, so here I am copying that entire directory to my version of the repository. Um, can you do for me on your directory in your working directory? So in this star 2020, um, 177 and so on, can you do, uh, let me actually, I can't even see the permissions. So I'm going to ask you to add, to do CH mod, um, A plus R. This is going to let me read that file. And then you should be able to just copy. Now I can't do this. I can. It's going to tell me I don't have. Uh, yeah, I do not have permission to change your file. But this command is the one that you want to have. So I'm going to put this in the chat for you so that you can just copy and paste that. Run that command, and then I should be able to copy the entire folder. Okay, done. Thank you. Okay. Now I got it. Okay, so now I'm going to just real quickly make sure that everything in this folder is something that we want in the repository. And it is. And I'm going to do git add this and that. So I have now added. What Git does is that it keeps track of a local version of the repository. Um, and so Git add says, Git, you want to start tracking this file. But it hasn't yet told the central repository maintained at GitHub that we are tra tracking this file. So now I'm going to have to do Git commit minus M adding Yang's 
analysis. And the reason why I'm not adding the apostrophe is because it's a special character. And so it, it interprets it as a single quote. Um, and I'd rather have bad grammar than bugs. All right, so I have just done git add. Now I'm gonna do git push. Ah. And I mistyped my password. All right, so now your analysis is in there. And what I would recommend that you do, unless you have something that you wanted to save um, in that repository, and you probably don't, I would delete this directory and check it out again. Oh, okay. That's that's the easiest way. If if we spent a while, we could figure out some way of recovering that copy of the Git repository, except that it's probably going to take a non-trivial amount of time. And you ha and because all of your work is now checked in, it doesn't save you anything. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK, you're welcome. So Christine, uh, we got Adria up to the point where she can now commit, but she's having issue with the with the uh, Git commit. Is it probably the um, permissions? Yeah, I, I thought that's what it was, but let's see. Uh, can you share your screen, Adria, just so we can just check? Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. So I the issue was um uh well after the comment and then what did we do? What did we do? Git push and then you I put my username ah, and password. You have to do git pull. Yeah, I did that again, but let's do it again. Okay. Just do control X. It's trying to do a merge. So it thinks that the two versions are sufficiently different. It's trying to merge them, but because everybody's been editing the same files, it should do a merge fine on its own. So it puts you into the command line version of X Emacs, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. So to get out of it, you do control X. Oh no, this is, sorry, this is VI. So you're gonna do escape colon W Q and then enter. She knows VI, that's what she uses. Sorry? <laughs> no, I'm saying she, yeah. she knows VI, that's what she uses. Ah, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> I'm used to explaining VI to people. Okay, so so now after that, would I do um, use the line again, command again? Get yeah, git push. Well, that worked. Done. Very good. Great. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So I guess now. Excellent. This <laughs> did, did you successfully book a histogram? This is the second half. No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you can successfully book a histogram, it shouldn't be that hard. Well, she says, <laughs> done. Um, then you're in good shape. Yeah, I'm just gonna follow the slides now. And if you okay. guys are still here, then uh, I'll ask. But if not, I can just send a message on Slack. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we have a lot of people online. I think a lot of the people we have still online have actually gotten through everything. Um, so
let me ask if there are questions. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, on slide um, 20, no, uh, on slide uh, 17, when you book multiple histograms, uh, does the underscore H should be the different for each histogram? No. Um, so if you look in the guts of the code, part of it that you didn't change, um, let me see if I have, okay, so, um, I'm gonna do steal the screen share. And here I am looking interactively at, I plucked some, I guess I randomly picked Yang's analysis. So um, here, the parts that you guys were changing were up in here where you're, um, and this one doesn't have any histograms booked, but um, down here at the bottom, um, uh, you are declaring some member variables for this class, which um, include a map that uses a string and map use to map to a histogram one a one dimensional histogram pointer, and that map is called underscore h. And here we're just following rivet conventions because there's no reason to do anything differently from what the template code does. Um, so when you go in the um, when you go into and you book it and you're calling it via a string it's using that string to find the right histogram. So this, the underscore H is the same because you more or less have an array of all of your histograms and you're just keeping track of them with a string. Okay. So I just need to add another book for add a histogram. Yeah, so if you were let if you were booking um, if you were booking more histograms and they just like let's say table one had um, five histograms, you would just go through and copy this line, but you're gonna have the last number be a two, a three, a four, and a five okay. to get all five histograms. Um, and if you had, um, if table two had one histogram, you would do two, one, one, but the rest of the command would be the same and you wanna change the name of this. Well, in all cases, you wanna have different names of your strings so that you have a clear mapping between a histogram and, uh, um, and a string. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, I'm not seeing us lose a lot of people and we're not getting questions. So I don't know if people are hanging on in case they have questions. Ah, Will, you have your hand raised. Yes, I have a question actually. Fantastic. So, um, Charles and I have gotten the histograms written out, each of the booking functions. However, when we try to run it, we get a segmentation fault. Um, at least I do. Charles is trying it right now. So okay. Paste the text of what we get. But what's strange is it does the rivet, uh, you know, info, then rivet, uh, says finalizing analyses. But then I get a segmentation fault based on off line four of the run analysis uh, shell script, where you, uh, do you. Do you guys have it checked in to the repository? Uh, and if not, you could. Wait, can we not check in? Uh, 
code that has sec fault in it. I can take a look with them in the room. Um, yeah, we can we can check it in. Um, just uh, give me a sec to see what Charles uh, what result he got. Yeah, we'll we'll commit it and see what happens. I mean, by default, I would say maybe you should go back and. Um... Oh wait, Make Charles sure. says it's running on his computer. So it might be my rivet version. Okay, that easily could be because I think you were using a um, slightly different rivet version. All right, well then in that case, our code is working. So uh, we'll commit it. Cool. Right. And then you probably should, I think Charles is running on uh, ACF. So I think you might want to run on ACF. Yeah, I'll jump on ACF as well for tomorrow at least. If you're ambitious, you could install a different version of Rivet on your laptop or run on ACF. Um, I think we have, so uh, I will otherwise start going down the list of participants and checking in, or maybe I can ask, um, Antonio to do that for a second so I can step out. Uh, why did you stop it? What? Oh, because uh, I need a drink of water. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. I assume we break for lunch at some point. Yeah. Well, yeah, so we're past, the, yeah, that's a good question. So we're past the scheduled time, which is why I wanted to, so, I don't know if people are hanging on to, I, and the plan was not that we would come back until tomorrow. Right, right. So I don't know why people, uh, so uh, maybe we can, we've checked in. Uh, let me give people one second to chime in with why are you, with a, why are you still here? Yeah, why are you still here? <laughs> let me <go> <laughs> Okay, no one is speaking up. And let me double check the chat. Ajiro says that she just, they just, just like our voices. Not by the end of the week, you won't. <laughs> yeah, soon it's going to be a hangry voice, so. Yeah, so with that, I would propose that we break and then if you guys need something, um, ask on the Slack. All right, going once, going twice, gone. All right, we will see you guys tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern. Okay, thanks everyone, bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye, Thank bye. You. bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.